and welcome to episode 5 of Project Mouse. Now that the turret is finally finished and ready for paint, it's time to move on to the next phase of the project. Recreating the mouse was something I was hesitant to take on, as there were a lot of aspects of this build that I really didn't know how to resolve. Scratch building really tests your design and engineering abilities. I'm glad I've taken on this challenge, as it is teaching me about so many new techniques. Now it's time to tackle everyone's least favourite stage of model tank building, the lower hull with its associated running gear. This is going to be the most complicated stage of the build, as it involves a wide range of materials and techniques to recreate the mouse accurately. The material I've chosen to make the lower hull, and indeed most of the mouse from, is ABS. I've already used it to 3D print the main parts of the turret, as you'll have seen in earlier episodes. It's an excellent material to work with, having no grain, being hard and easy to file and sand to a smooth finish. I decided to get the bulk of the flat parts for the mouse laser cut in 5mm thick ABS. This would match the maximum thickness of the mouse armour and could be thinned down when necessary. Partway through designing the mouse components, I learned about something called kerf. This is the cutting allowance for the laser cutting process. It's based on a factor of the material thickness you're cutting, and varies from material to material. After contacting the laser cutting company, I redrew my parts based on the tolerances they recommended. A few days later, a package arrived containing my mouse parts. They were well packed and came with a protective paper and plastic covering. So now I could start putting the hull together, except it wasn't quite that easy. The cutting allowance I used was a bit on the high side, which meant that all the parts were slightly tighter than planned. This actually wasn't a problem, as the ABS could be easily filed down to allow the parts to fit together. This was a lot better than not allowing for the cutting allowance, and the parts being undersized and a loose fit. Eventually the parts fitted together well. Leaving the paper on at this stage was a really good idea. Labelling all the tabs and slots was very useful and helped so much with test fitting and reassembly. I marked the ends of the frames where they needed to be thinned down to the correct thickness. M3 studding was used at this stage for the idler and drive axles, just to hold the parts together. To hang the mouse suspension and road wheels, I designed some brass beams which were CNC machined by a local engineering firm. These would be more than strong enough to support the mouse. I found some brass that was close to size, and after it was machined, the edges were reprofiled to match the prototype. Now it was time to finally assemble the parts of the hull. I started by inserting the suspension beams into one side of the hull. Some of these were tighter than I'd planned, but that was no bad thing. Then came the difficult part, lining up and fitting the opposite side of the hull. Again, the beams were a tight fit, but eventually slid into their respective holes. Then it was just a case of installing the ends and the floor. The M3 idler and drive axles were then fitted to hold everything together. So with the beams now installed, it was finally time to glue everything in place. I'd been recommended a glue called Plastic Magic, which bonds ABS. It's a typical liquid cement, applied with a brush. 
I applied it to all the mating surfaces and then fitted the parts together before running more solvent along the seams. G-clamps were then used to tighten everything up while the solvent set. With the solvent fully cured, the clamps were removed and the hull examined. The brass suspension beams were not glued in place, but are absolutely square and solid, with no movement at all. You can see the frame ends are also now the correct thickness. There is still some reprofiling to do, but I'm very happy with the result. I later went round and applied the solvent to the laser cut edges of the ABS, which sealed them really well. Now I can move on to the parts for the drivetrain. Here you can see all the parts in my CAD software for 3D printing. The pale and dark grey parts will be cast in pewter, the blue parts will remain 3D prints. The parts are then exported to my slicer software to be prepared for 3D printing. Here they are checked for errors and support material is added. And these are the parts fresh from the printer. To see more about the 3D printer I use, check out Sarah's vlog number 9. Once the parts are removed from the build plate, the support material has to be trimmed away and the parts cleaned up. I've already made a start on cleaning up the parts and have many ready for mould making to be cast in pewter but that'll have to wait for the next episode of Project Mouse. I hope you enjoy watching Project Mouse. If you did, hit the like button and subscribe to my YouTube channel to see more Staples and Vine projects. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments and I'll get back to you. Thanks for watching.